today's morning Sunday service. Uh, all of you who are watching us online, we welcome you in this season of Christmas. And uh, as everybody uh, are excited that it is Christmas, although we cannot meet, but still uh, the festive season reminds us that how we were brought from that pit and today Lord saved us and gave us this beautiful life and that is the reason that we can rejoice together first John says like that if we confess our sin God is faithful enough to forgive us what a wonderful father we have no matter how our sin looks like no matter what sin we have committed still there is grace so at this time I believe the the greatest need of our is to say Lord I need you I need you more I need you more than ever before let us all close our eyes and look to God and say, Lord, every hour, Lord, that I spend is your grace on my life, Lord. Every moment that I am happy, it's because you are sending your joy to me. Lord, you are my one defense, my righteousness, Lord. You are my salvation. You are my fortress. I want that all of you who are watching us to close your eyes together with us and join this worship and say that Lord I'm looking at no one else but you because you are my one defense Holy Spirit you be our leader surround this place surround the atmosphere oh Lord with your power we need you, Lord. We need you. We need you. Today we cry out like David cried. That, Lord, you are my fortress. You are my defense. When I am afraid, I hide in your shelter. He's worthy to touch you wherever you are. Lord, if we give you praise, we know that you listen and honor each and every prayer that is being prayed, oh Lord. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. Be lifted up. Be lifted up, Lord, in this time. Your grace is more 
Where grace is found is where you are, and where you are, Lord, I am free. Holiness is Christ in me. Where sin runs deep, your grace is known. Where grace is found. Is where you are, and where you are, Lord, I am free. Holiness is Christ with me. Lord, I need you. Oh, I need you. Every my song to rise to you when temptation comes my way and when I cannot stand I fall on you Jesus you're my hope and stay so teach my song to rise to you when temptation comes my way, and when I cannot stand, I fall on you. Jesus, you're my hope and stay. Yes. Lord, I need you. Oh, I need you. Jesus, Lord, we 
give this time and our life in your hands, Holy Spirit. In your precious and mighty name, Jesus, we pray. Amen. Hallelujah. Today, I want to welcome each of you to this online service as we are approaching the admin, the, the day the Lord Jesus Christ was born. And this Sunday, I just want to encourage each one of us, keep the excitement going. Keep that joy uh, and, and that happiness always in your life. Because these, these days are dragging. These days are so, uh, so dry. So let's keep the excitement going. So today I want to uh, remind you through this message, eagerly awaiting the Lord's coming. Eagerly awaiting the Lord's coming. Amen. So we are all approaching Christmas and we are waiting for that day when all of us will gather together and celebrate that joyous day. And But in that all that celebration, I want to ask you, are you waiting for the Lord? Because that is the most important question today. Are you and I waiting for the Lord? Amen. Luke chapter 2, verse 25 to 35. At that time, there was a man in Jerusalem named Simeon. He was righteous and devout and was eagerly waiting for the Messiah to come and rescue Israel. The Holy Spirit was upon him and had revealed to him that he would not die until he had seen the Lord's Messiah. That day, the Spirit led him to the temple. So when Mary and Joseph came to present the baby, Jesus, to the Lord, as the law required, Simeon was there. He took the child in his arms and praised God, saying, Sovereign Lord, now let your servant die in peace, as you have promised. I have seen your salvation, which you have prepared for you all people. He is a light to reveal God to the nations, and he is the glory of your people Israel. Jesus' parents were amazed at what was being said about him. Then Simeon blessed them, and he said to Mary, the baby's mother, This child is destined to cause many in Israel to fall, and many others to rise. He has been sent as a sign from God, but many will oppose him. As a result, the deepest thoughts of many hearts will be revealed, and a sword will pierce your very soul. Amen. Hallelujah. Such a beautiful passage where uh, we see how Simeon was waiting for the Lord. Amen. So Christmas is approaching, but many in the world are waiting just for the celebration. Because all through the years and uh, every Sunday, they have not come with that excitement. They have not come with that joy. They have not uh, uh, even... Uh, celebrated that day but when it comes to Christmas when it comes in December people are in a mood of celebration people are full of excitement and joy because they want to celebrate that day but today I want to remind you through the life of Simeon he was not just waiting but he was eagerly awaiting the salvation of Israel. Amen. Hallelujah. And that is what is important. Today, it is not about Christmas. It is, it is about the birth of Jesus. Why did he come? And why was Simeon waiting? Because it was Jesus who was coming into this world, bringing salvation. Hallelujah. Today, for those who have received that salvation, to us, the word is that we need to be eagerly waiting for the Lord's return. Amen. So don't ever forget that the Lord who came 2,000 years back is going to come back again to take his people. Those who truly believed him and followed him. And in this celebration, let us not forget this message. That the Lord is coming 
and he's going to take those people who are eagerly waiting for him just like Simeon was waiting. Amen. So, I want, I, I'm reminded of a story. Uh, there's a little girl named Amy and uh, she had prepared her manger and uh, 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 put those uh, dolls around Joseph and Mary and uh, baby Jesus and all the cattle and the shepherd. And, and she had made a beautiful small little manger. And uh, uh, after that, uh, when, when she came back, she saw that the baby Jesus is missing. So she started searching the whole house. She, she looked under her bed. She looked under the couch. She, she uh, went around the house and she was so, uh, so desperate to find baby Jesus. And then finally she realized that, uh, uh, that she is not able to locate where Jesus was. So she went with a sad face uh, to her mother. And the mother also started searching for Jesus. And finally, they found baby Jesus among the books in the shelf. And uh, now the, uh, uh, Amy was so glad to find Jesus that she took Jesus and was about to place him back in the manger that the mother said, no, we are not going to place him there. We're going to place him on Christmas. So let's just wait for Christmas so that we can place Jesus in that manger. So Amy was uh, uh, very uh, disturbed by that. And she said, no, the manger is not complete without Jesus. Jesus needs to be there. But then the mother said, it is good because on that day there was a waiting. There was a waiting especially by those prophets who had prophesied about the birth of Jesus, about the salvation of Israel. They were waiting for that glorious day, but they did not see it. But then the angels came and announced to the shepherds and the shepherds were waiting. Mary and Joseph were waiting. The wise men who saw the stars and, and who, who started uh, coming towards and, and uh, wanting to see, they were waiting and everyone was waiting. But there was one special man named Simeon. He was waiting. Amen. And his weight was different from everyone else. And this mother, uh, uh, in, in, in the way that Amy could understand, she explained to her that when uh, your little brother was about to take birth, how eagerly we were waiting for that child to come. Haven't you been waiting? So, so Amy was excited and she said, yes, we were so excited. And when that day came, that excitement was full. So are we. Amen. When we eagerly wait for our Lord's return, that excitement, that joy will become full. Amen. So that is the waiting that I am talking about. And, and, and that was the waiting with which Simeon was, was before the presence of God. He was of uh, age and he did not die until that promise was fulfilled. Amen. So what was so special about Simeon? The first thing. If we're going to see is he waited as a righteous and devout man. Hallelujah. In verse 25, you read it. It says Simeon was righteous and devout man. Amen. That is how we need to wait. Because this Christmas will come and go. It will come another year. There will be marriages that is going to happen. There will be birthday parties. There will be occasions that we will celebrate. All these uh, celebrations may bring joy, but there will be a greater joy for those 
who are eagerly waiting for the return of the Lord. Simeon was eagerly waiting and not simply waiting, but he was right before God. He was a devout man, devoted to the church, devoted to serving God, devoted to people, devoted to the commands of the Lord. That is how Simeon was waiting. His wait was not that, oh, okay, God has said it was his promise, so uh, let me live the way I want and when that day comes, I will be excited. No, no. He was waiting with all righteousness. He was pure at heart. He was true to God. He loved God more than anything else. Amen. That is how we need to wait. Today, I want to ask you, how is our wait? Are we simply waiting for Christmas to happen? Or are we waiting for that glorious day? Because we are so close to it. Jesus is coming back. Wait for him. And wait eagerly with all truth and purity. 1 John 3 verse 2 and 3. Dear friends, we are already God's children. But he has not yet shown us what we will be like when Christ appears. But we do know that we will be like him, for we will see him as he really is. And all who have eager expectation will keep themselves pure just as he is pure. Amen. So all those who have that eagerness to see him will make yourself pure and holy. Because you are expecting the pure and holy bride of God. He's coming back. He's coming back for us. So wait. Wait with purity. Because you and I don't know how we're going to be presented. How it is going to be. We don't know. But we have a hope. Because he has given us a promise that he's coming back to take us. So if he is coming back, I need to eagerly wait for him. Just like a bride prepares herself and, and makes herself pure and, and, and does her beauty treatment and does everything possible for that day of marriage. She awaits that day when she will meet her groom, the one with whom she has been betrothed, the one with whom she has been engaged to. She who has waited and prepared herself in all purity and holiness for her groom. She awaits and when that day approaches, she is so excited because when the groom comes and accepts her, she becomes complete. Hallelujah. So, if that bride is found with someone else, with other relationships and has not maintained her purity, the, the groom has all the right to reject and that was the law during the time of the Jewish so how eagerly are we waiting are we waiting like that bride who prepares for that day of her marriage amen it's so beautiful it is that is how Simeon was waiting because he knew that day will be so glorious secondly he was eagerly waiting for the Messiah. There was an eagerness. Repeat after me. Eagerly waiting. Amen. That is how there should be an eagerness in us. Waiting for the Messiah to come. It, it is not something that, uh, uh, that everyone can do. They... When, when we have to wait for someone, we get so irritated, we get so angry, we, we lose our control and we say, oh, they are delaying, they, they do not know how to keep time and, and we keep complaining. That is not eagerness. 
I mean, eagerness comes when you are waiting for something that you love. Something that you cherish. And no matter how much it delays, I will still wait. And I will not leave until I've received it. Amen. That is how Simeon was waiting. Philippians 3 verse 20. But we are citizens of heaven where the Lord Jesus Christ lives. And we are eagerly waiting for him to return as our savior. Amen. We are citizens of heaven, not on this earth. We don't belong here. So we don't have to wait the way other people wait. The other people are angry. The other people are frustrated. The other people are, are so, so lost their cool. They don't have the patience. But we are citizens of heaven. We know what waiting is. And we wait because the thing that we're going to receive is more costly than gold or silver or diamond or anything that this world can ever give us. That is how we need to wait. And that is how Simeon was waiting. The mother who gets pregnant waits nine months and after nine months she is so eager to receive that child. The whole family joins in that celebration when that day happens. Amen. And some of you are already expecting. Sister Joy, uh, we are with you. We are with you in prayer because uh, the Lord has promised and that child will come. So with you, we too are eagerly waiting for that child. So believe me, all of us have experienced as those who have become mothers and fathers, how you've expected eager, eagerly uh, waiting for that child and you received. So is our eagerness for the Lord. Amen. Third, the Holy Spirit was upon him. Amen. The Holy Spirit rested upon him. So it is when the Holy Spirit comes into a person that he knows right from wrong. He knows uh, what he needs to do. He, he knows to take decisions because the Holy Spirit guides him. The Holy Spirit protects him. The Holy Spirit uh, reveals things to him. The, the prophecies come because the Holy Spirit is upon him. Even when Jesus uh, entered the water and was baptized by John the Baptist, uh, the Bible says that uh, the Holy Spirit descended upon him and led him into the wilderness. So it is the Holy Spirit that has come upon Simeon and has come upon each of us who have been eagerly waiting. Amen. If there is no eagerness, then you cannot receive the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit comes when we eagerly expect it. And Simeon was a man who knew to eagerly wait for the Lord. And that is why he was full of the Holy Spirit. He, the Holy Spirit protected him, revealed everything to him, spoke to him. And that is why Simeon knew that the God who promised me will fulfill that promise. And till that day, I will not see death. That is what the Bible says. So he was so sure that he goes uh, and holds that child and he says, I have seen and I have experienced the salvation of the Lord. Now I can die in peace. Amen. That is because the Holy Spirit was upon him. Today I want to ask you, is the Holy Spirit upon you? Because if the Holy Spirit comes upon you, he will not leave you as orphans, but he will remain in you and guide you. Amen. And fourthly, he was led by the Spirit. Amen. If the Holy Spirit is upon you, then the Holy Spirit is the one that will lead you. So because 
he knew what waiting was. It was Holy Spirit who kept him patiently for that day. You and I, we need the Holy Spirit. We need the leading of the Holy Spirit. Only then can we remain in Christ. Otherwise, we would have began well, but today we will be nowhere and we will miss when he comes. We will not be alive or we may even be alive, but we will be unaware because the Holy Spirit The Bible says, uh, led Simeon to the temple when Jesus was coming in for the dedication. Amen. So it's the Holy Spirit that will lead us to that day, that beautiful day when he returns. So be led by the Holy Spirit. John 16, verse 13 and 14. When the Spirit of truth comes, he will guide you into all truth. He will not speak on his own, but will tell you what he has heard. He will tell you about the future. He will bring me glory by telling you whatever he receives from me. Amen. Because the Holy Spirit is a spirit of truth and he will guide you into all truth. He will not lie to you. He will not take you into destruction, but rather he will take you to eternal life. He will take you to that day. And take you safely. So be led by the Spirit. And fifthly and last. He waited and thus seen the salvation of the Lord. Because Simeon waited, he saw the salvation of the Lord. I'm telling you and I'm reminding you, dear people of God, listen to this message. The Lord says today, and this is the word of the Lord, wait upon the Lord and you will see his salvation. Do not be misled. Do not uh, be discouraged in this walk because there is struggle. There is problems. There are worries. Loved ones leave you. Uh, Situations come. Storms are hitting you. But wait patiently because your salvation will come. Simeon waited and he saw the salvation of the Lord. Amen. Mika 7 verse 7. As for me, I will look to the Lord for help. I will wait confidently for God to save me and my God will certainly hear me. Amen. Hallelujah. Because he waited, the Lord saved him. There was salvation. Hallelujah. Today, for those who are waiting for his return, I'm telling you, you, your salvation will be complete. We have been saved the day we received Jesus, but our salvation will only be complete on that day when he comes. Amen. So remain in the Lord and wait patiently because I know for sure that his plans for your life are not for destruction, but to give you a future and a hope. Amen. So remain in him. Wait, just as Simeon waited. You will not be disappointed. Amen. So let me pray with you and believe me today. When you wait, you will see your salvation. Father, I thank you for this word and I bless your people, Lord, wherever they are, whatever situation they are, Lord, right now, your word will deliver them because your word is a word of truth. Your word brings healing, oh God, because your word is Jesus. And Jesus' name, I receive and I, Lord, believe for people, oh God, who are out there, If they are sick, let them be healed. If they are in any situation, deliver them from that, O God. And Lord God, you minister to them. Father, we await your return. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. May the love of the Father, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the sweet fellowship and communion of the Holy Spirit rest and abide with each one of us now and forevermore. And all God's people said, Amen, Amen, Amen. God bless you.